One of the things I've come to understand with watching so many movies is that your interest in a subject matter has very little to do with how much you enjoy a film. Sometimes a movie with a plot that I have absolutely no interest in could somehow become one of my favourite films. It's all about the talent behind and in front of the camera and the circumstances that allow these people to make such a great picture. This is the case with books too, and my thoughts on this was cemented with the reading of the short story The Old Man and the Sea. It's literally a tale of an old fisherman who hasn't caught anything in around three months on his most recent trip. Very little can sound more boring for me, but I was fascinated by how captivated I was by this book, with the old man's mini-adventure gripping me like I never thought it would be able to. His philosophical conversations with himself and the fishes he encounters, his ingenuity and improvisation, his incredible determination and strength despite his age and tiredness was absorbing and inspiring. The magnificent way in which the book is written has you sit right there next to the old man, a silent and curious observer to this great revered fable. The man is a curious character, something of an enigma. His relationship with the sea is like a warm pensioner's bond with his elderly wife. There are fights, quarrels, and sometimes the two are just irreversibly tired of each other, but ultimately they love and respect each other deeply. Normally I can't stand scenery-heavy books, where there are paragraphs and paragraphs focused on describing things left, right and centre. I prefer books with lots of dialogue, which is something the old man in the sea is not, unless you count internal dialogue. But again, it just shows how brilliant the book is, that I never even considered its descriptive nature until after I had finished it. The detail with all the fishing technical jargon is precise and gives the book further credibility. At times you can smell the ocean. The book has an almost hypnotic trance that it covers you with and pulls you further away from your lunch break in the cafeteria and deeper into its world like the swordfish, pulling the old man further and further out to sea away from civilization into this blue cold world. The book is spellbinding and a deep tale about humanity, nature and the circle of life and death. To a billion people living their lives, the struggle of a poverty-stricken old man and his fishing trip on a dry morning means very little. But for him and us as the grateful viewer, it is a ringside seat to the epic and sad battle of a man against the elements. I learned that many consider the book an allegory of author Ernest Hemingway's career. I haven't read any of his other works, so I can't say, but I did do a quick read up on him, and it really does add prestige to the book to look at it as a metaphor for his works. Like the sharks that attack the boat after the old man catches a fish and he struggles to fight them off. I heard these sharks were symbolism for the author's critics with the old man despising them since they were unable to create anything beautiful of their own, unlike the majestic swordfish. I found the book very inspiring and spiritual, not least because this old man, time and again during his battles, finds a way to motivate himself and fight on despite his pain and growing fatigue. It feels like a tale symbolising man's struggle and journey through life itself. As the sea does in the book, life has a tendency to throw unexpected things our way, sometimes terrific and sometimes terrible. At times it is calm and tranquil, and others brutal and unyielding. I give this book a 9 out of 10.